Hi everyone. Okay, here we are, ready to start the course and ready to start your careers as professional economists. Now in this short introductory video here, I just want to make a few introductory remarks about the course and uh, a couple remarks uh, about the PhD program uh, more generally. Now the first semester of the program and really the whole first year of the program is going to be kind of like a sort of like a military boot camp in that you are not going to have enough time often to learn all the things that you think you have to learn and to do all the things that you have to do. Uh, so it's going to seem like the faculty in that first year are kind of piling it on, kind of really uh, overwhelming you. But let me say that the faculty is not, although it might appear that way, the faculty is not trying to weed out students. The faculty wants you to succeed in the program very much, wants you all to succeed in the program. So what the faculty is doing, what we're doing here in that first year is trying to give you everything that you need to succeed in the program and after that to succeed in your careers as professional economists. So at the end of the first year, you're going to be doing, taking the comprehensive exams. After that, you'll be doing some courses, but also doing some research. And uh, it's really that first year that's gonna be so intensive. And of course, the math camp is designed to provide you with the mathematical foundations for succeeding in that first year. So I hope that the Math Camp course will stand you in good stead as you go through the first year right, right from the beginning so you can kind of hit the ground running, so to speak. Uh, that's probably enough about the program. So what about the course? Now, we expect that even though you're doing this remotely, we expect that you're going to be working just as hard and putting in just as much effort remotely as you would be doing if you were here in Tucson. Now, at the beginning of the course, I would say in the first, the first few lectures, you're going to probably feel that, gee, you know, a lot of what we're doing is stuff that I've done before, or at least I've done in some, some way before. Well, there's a reason for that. The way I try to do things is that for every concept, for every new concept that we see, I try to start with the simplest, most transparent, most familiar, version of the concept and then try to build and generalize from there. Now, I often say that it's that you have to walk before you can run. So it's it's kind of like a little kid has to learn to walk before he can run. In fact, uh, I have a term that I use for these simple, familiar, often transparent versions of a concept or examples. I call them bunny slope versions of the concept, bunny slope examples. Well, bunny slope. <laughs> what do I mean by bunny slope? Well, that's a term from skiing. Most ski areas have something that's called a bunny slope. Now, I learned to ski only about 20 years ago, so I was much older than most people are when they learn to ski. Most people learn to ski when they're kids, I think. Maybe even little kids. Uh, but, you know, I learned when I was an adult. I was a, an older adult, maybe even. And so, if you've ever tried to ski, you know that it is not an easy thing to do the first time you try to do it. In fact, here's a photo of me taken the day before I went out for my first day of skiing. Now you can see that, that uh, 
this was really easy in this environment, but in this environment you can't go very fast, okay? And so uh, here's another photo. This photo was taken. Uh, this was my first time on skis on actual snow. And believe me, it was all I could do to stay upright, even when I was standing still, let alone when I was moving. You know, the skis would slip out from under me, and my feet, of course, were still in the skis. So I took a lesson on the bunny slope. Here's a photo of a typical bunny slope at a ski area. Now, as you can see, the slope is very shallow, very gradual, and this is the easiest version of skiing there is. You can see that these little guys are very low to the ground, which is great for balance. Now, on the other hand, I was not low to the ground. In fact, the only times that I was low to the ground was when I fell. <laughs> And then I was, I was on the ground. But, you know, I started out on this bunny slope, and then I graduated to actually skiing on real slopes. And eventually, you know, I learned to ski, and I became a reasonably good skier, I guess. And I could even uh, sometimes ski on some of the steeper terrain. Well, that is just what we're going to do in math camp. We are going to start each concept with the bunny slope version of the concept, and then we are going to work our way up to the steeper terrain really fast. Now, there is uh, a second feature of the Math Camp course that is more a matter of the way that I want you to kind of approach the course. And that is that one of the most important things that you can take away from the course is not just the mathematical details in the course, but also the ideas of precision and clarity. Those are important. In fact, let me emphasize those by writing them down. So we're talking about precision and clarity. Now, we're going to see an example of the issue of precision and clarity in our very first lecture, uh, where we will talk about the distinction between the notation for sets and the notation for n-tuples. Now, if you were to use the wrong notation for either one of those, if you were to use the set notation for an n-tuple or vice versa, and believe me, every year there are some students who do exactly that, when you do that, the person who's reading your work can't figure out what in the heck you're talking about, can't figure out what you're doing. So when that happens in the course, when that happens in the program more generally, in your other courses, and when that happens when you're doing a research paper or you're giving a research presentation, what's going to happen is the people trying to read this, uh, they're just going to give up. The people watching your presentation, they're just going to give up paying attention and they're going to start thinking about something else. So it is important for you to start building the habits of focusing on precision and clarity right from the outset. And I will emphasize that during the Math Camp course and we'll point it out several times where, where that's important. Now, let me try to work to a conclusion here by uh, giving, a, giving you a few words about administrative, some administrative details. So that would be grades and exams. So grades. So because this course is offered during the summer, before you are actually formally registered as U of A students, and because you haven't paid tuition, uh, 
The grade for this course is not going to appear on any official U of A transcript. Nevertheless, after the course is over, I will report the grades to the department, and the department will record them and keep them. And in fact, the fact that the grade for this course isn't going to go on any official transcript doesn't really make it that much different than all the grades that are going to go on official transcripts. And here's why. Because in the end, when you finish a program and you get your PhD and you're first on the job market to try to get your first job, let's say for example as an assistant professor at a uh, university economics department, the people doing the hiring they are not going to ask to see your transcript. They're not going to care about what grades you got in the courses. They're actually not trying to hire good students. They're trying to hire good assistant professors. They want to be able to find out about your research. They want to know about the quality of your teaching. They aren't going to care about your transcript and your course grades. So the grades are really important only as kind of signals not signals to eventual employers, really just as signals to the economics faculty and more importantly to you yourself about how you're doing. And in fact, I can say with a lot of confidence because, because I've been doing this for a long time uh, that the grades in those first year courses are very accurate signals. They're very good predictors of how people will do on the comprehensive exams. People who get A's in the courses, uh, they pass the comprehensive exams. Maybe not on the first try, but they eventually they pass. People who get B minus, C's, they just don't pass. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. So it's, it's the people in the middle where the prediction has actually some variation. People that get B pluses and B's, some pass, most of them pass, some don't pass. So the grades in the courses, while they aren't going to be any meaningful in any official way, really, um, other than you have to get grades that are good enough to keep you in the university. <laughs> Beyond that, they're really only important as signals, especially signals to you about how you're doing, how things are going for you in the program. Now, the grade in this course is going to be determined really by how you do on the exam that we have at the end of the course. Uh, whatever you get on the exam, that's going to be the grade that I'm going to report to the department with one little exception. That is, if you don't do so well on the exam and you did really well on the exercises, I will use that to marginally bump up the grade from what it was on the exam. It's not going to go the other way. If you didn't do as well on the exercises but you can really do it on the exam, yeah, that's the grade you're going to get. And so I think that's enough about grades and exams. I, I'll put all this in the uh, syllabus and send out emails about the details when necessary. So let's kind of finish off here uh, with something that I hope doesn't happen to you as you're watching the lectures in the course. I don't want this to happen, so we'll try to keep things engaging enough and inject a little fun into things so that we don't have this during uh, any of our lectures. Since our first equation tells us that y equals 3x plus 2, this means that we can substitute a 3x plus 2 in for the y in our second equation. In other words, since y means the same thing as 3x plus 2, we can replace the y in the second equation with a 3x plus 2. And rewriting our second equation, we now have 7x minus 4 times parentheses 3x plus 2. Okay, so hopefully uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, now it's time, I think, to see if we can stay awake during the first lecture. And uh, it's time to go ahead 
Math Camp. Let's do it.